bursting the bubble on jeans. Do you believe that you have an influence over your biology? Or do you believe that you are just a victim to your genes? If you are open to the possibility of having unlimited influence over your biology, you might want to stay and listen. I'm very excited to share with you here some fascinating information. So allow yourself to listen with your heart and feel whether it is true for you. We have all heard the term DNA at some point or another. DNA is that swirly helix that lives in most cells of your body. It is made of a combination of four chemical structures or bases, A, C, G, and T. Imagine each one of these bases represented on a string of Christmas lights. Any three bases together make a codon or an amino acid and when you have a string of these it makes up a protein. These proteins are important as they make up the physical structure of your body. The DNA double helix model was deduced in 1953 and this was an amazing time in history as it was thought that we had discovered the blueprint of life. As now we can read this sequence of Christmas lights, we will know everything there is to know about every disease and human trait. And then of course we will be able to tell everyone that they have a particular sequence of DNA and this means that they are more likely to have a certain trait or disease. It is prominently believed that one gene equals one trait or one disease. However, when the Human Genome Project got underway in 1989, this wasn't found to be the case. They expected to find that for every human protein, we would have one corresponding gene, thereby predicting 140,000 genes for every protein in the body. However, findings only revealed 34,000 genes. Did you also know that one gene can be read in more than 30,000 different ways? Yes, 30,000 different ways. So what is really going on? Now the story starts getting juicier. As we know, stem cells are a huge interest to scientists because they have the potential to become any cell in the body. Dr. Bruce Lipton, a cutting edge cell biologist, did some experiments with stem cells in a Petri dish and discovered how these cells could become muscle cells or liver cells, all depending on the laboratory environment that he exposed them to. He also found that when he took out the genes from a cell nucleus and let the cells live in a petri dish without feeding them more food than was already present in the plate, those cells survived for two or more months eating and breathing and still very alive until there was no more food in the plate. So how can the genes be controlling the cell's life? As a result of these experiments, Bruce had an aha moment. He saw that the environment was controlling the readout of the genes. 
And this would explain how the cell survived in the petri dish for so long without their DNA. So now we get a new understanding from this, which is genes do not turn on and off all by themselves. The cell membrane has receptors that interact with the environment, which then signal the DNA to turn on or off. This is the field of epigenetics. Epi meaning above the genes. The control of the genes being above the genes and not the genes themselves. He gives the analogy that our cells function like a television set with antenna, which pick up information from the environment and respond to it. On a bigger scale, our body is like one big television, the receptors for the body being the skin, eyes, ears, and so on. Many identical twin studies have shown that even though their DNA is identical, the twins had different life experiences, switching certain genes on and off, resulting in them having different health traits. So does this mean we can actually control how our DNA is read and that we are not victims to our genes and therefore biology? Our brain processes 400 billion bits of information per second on a subconscious level, but we are only consciously aware of 2,000 of those. Those 2,000 bits of information have to do with the body, the environment, and time. To quote Dr. Joe Dispenza, one of the stars of the movie, what the bleep do we know? We can put our awareness on anything as humans and what we put our awareness on and for how long maps our destiny. This then means that the environment we bathe ourselves in, which includes our emotions, our thoughts, our beliefs, our perceptions of our world, all contribute to the way our genes are read. We aren't victims to our genes. Now, I'm going to take a deep breath here so we can pause. Everything is energy including our DNA, and on a subconscious level, our emotions, thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions. Everything. All part of the morphic field or matrix. So everything is information. Energy interacting with energy always. So if we have trapped emotions or certain belief systems, see them as enveloping your DNA energy, interacting with it and having an impact on how your DNA is expressed. Releasing these will free the DNA and cells to interact with the field of energy in a much more tuned in manner. Kind of like when you have tuned into a radio station correctly, but when you haven't, you hear all the crackly sounds. We are the same. We tune in and out of our environment and interact with it. Releasing the energy getting in the way of us interacting clearly is like being able to tune your frequency so you can better receive messages from the morphic field. 
Now, think of the heart being the emperor of the body. The emperor is in charge of all, keeping order and balancing it all delicately and efficiently. The heart sends out frequencies that coordinate the cells in the body, keeping balance just like the emperor does with his or her subjects. So what does this mean for us and our health? Well, it means that once we have our frequency tuned into our authentic heart space, by changing our perceptions, beliefs, and emotional state, we begin to vibrate at an energy level that is coherent with our field and earth. This means we're able to express our DNA in a positive way. Up till now, it was thought that if we know the DNA sequence or sequence of Christmas lights, we would be able to cut out genetic defects or bad bits of DNA and introduce good bits to influence health in certain disease states. So much research has been done for many years to try to achieve this. But Russian scientists have recently found that this doesn't have to be the way. They found that using certain modulated radio and light frequencies repaired the bad bits, which means that exposing the DNA to these frequencies brings about the change without having to be invasive. Coming back to what this means for our health, well, they found that we don't need modulated radio and light frequencies to bring us back to having positive gene expression. The vibration of the words we use, the beliefs and perceptions we have, can have the same impact. If they are based on kindness, compassion and love. Many cultures use mantras to help bring themselves to this vibration. Also the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto and the water crystals is a great example of how words impact the crystal structure of water. Again, that is energy or vibration. And coming back to our DNA, it's all energy. So the words we use in our self-talk or beliefs, perceptions and emotions all have an impact on our DNA. The Russian scientists said too that stress and a hyperactive intellect can distort our frequency. In their work, they also discovered that once we are in tune with our heart vibration, our DNA vibrates with the collective morphic field, and we can access the collective consciousness, which in some cultures is known as the Akashic Records, which allows us to operate outside time and space. Mind-blowing. Intuition, connection with all, bringing in healing of our planet, as we are all in tune, what else is possible? So how can we tune in better to our hearts so that our DNA will be expressed positively? The message in this video is that when we have filters that distort our view of the world, this distorts the signals that the DNA receives from the cell membrane and then distorts the expression of the DNA. Therefore, helping yourself by releasing these filters, you can help yourself tune in better to your heart. So how do you release these filters? 
There are certain techniques that are very simple to use that allow access to the subconscious mind. The ones I am most familiar with are meditation, which has been shown to be highly effective throughout the ages. And more recently, techniques such as the emotion code, the emotional freedom technique, matrix re-imprinting, and tools provided by the HeartMath Institute. In essence, you are a community of cells. When in tune to the field, we live in harmony. And on a larger scale, we are on the planet here to live as a community. If we can help ourselves tune in to our inbuilt health in this way, we have an impact vibrationally on the health of our planet. Just as a last thought, what if, by freeing your DNA, you open up to being the authentic you and moving towards being your full potential? And what if you are opening up to feeling interconnectedness and communication on so many levels? What else is possible? Thank you for listening with your heart and tuning in.